How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the Edge Show, where we talk all things blades. If you're someone that appreciates high-quality steel blades, if you are somebody that uses them, lives by the blade, and makes them like myself, I'm a bladesmith and knife maker, welcome to the Edge Show. This is the place for you, uh, where we, again, talk all things uh, blades and sometimes cats and weird things in the shop. Uh, like, I've ground my fingers twice, almost off this week been fun anyway so this week's going to be a little bit different instead of talking about like damascus and stuff i'm actually going to do a little bit of show and tell of how i do my scale shaping with wood scales on my knives um pre-epoxy which has helped with the finishing uh after it's epoxied and it's all dried and hardened so uh enjoy the next couple slides and then uh we'll do an end part in the closing and hopefully this will help some people that's just a hobbyist, someone that wants to make a knife once in their life, and or someone that's chasing it as a profession like I am myself. All right, guys, enjoy. Um, <clears throat> but um, I wanted to do something to help uh, those that are making knives, uh, just beginning and stuff. And uh, this is a bulletproof way you're going to ensure that your holes are lined up with your scales. And this is what you do. Um, you take your scales, make sure they're nice and flat, and then you take your blade, after, actually, no, let me start over. Take your scales, nice and flat, even, top to bottom, side to side. Tape them up at the bottom, the top, place them down, place your blade over said scales so it's sitting on top. So what this is basically going to represent, this is going to be your outside right, your outside left. And after this next part that I'm going to show you, you want to mark your outside left outside right inside right outside or inside left uh, that'll be very important because i've picked up scales and i've made two lefts and yep but just follow along my madness here and there's these short little videos so after you do that you're going to tape the blade to there so it's nice and firm lock it into your drill press with the vise uh, or clamp it down safely drill your holes now here's the thing Whatever size pins you're using, I'm using 532nds for these steak knives. Uh, after I drill my first initial hole, I take it off of the drill press and I take a what I call a shaping pin and I, I drive that in. So this is not a pin that's going to go into the knife. You can do that if you want to, but I use pins for different things for different reasons. So I have a set. So this guy's going to be wedged in there and it's going to stay. Take it back to the drill press, drill my next hole, take this off the drill press, pop this pin out. Take everything apart, and then you're going to do a mock assembly, as you're going to see in the next part here. And I'll show you the next step, so look for the next video. Okay, now we're going to be using the shaping pins, and, and we'll see why they're called shaping pins in a second. These are one of my, these, these guys are my favorite little tools. Um, so, after you have flattened this, both sides, right, and you've matched up, and now this is an important thing for matching up, if you have a butch book match uh, set of scales that are wood you're going to want to make sure you do that if you don't and you're just kind of winging it like i am because i uh, these all these scales that i cut for these five steak knives got lost in translation and mixed together my fault but i'm making them look nice that's the important part so what i've done is i've indicated how i'm having things laid out so you'll see my symbolism here or with the arrow pointing up outside right outside left and I put this at the bottom because I know that I'm going to be cutting away some material because I have excess either by grinder or by saw. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use our shaping pins. So you can use outside left or outside right whatever you're choosing is. I like to stay with how I drilled it where my blade is on. So it was on the outside right that's where I drilled through. I'm going to start with those guys and I'm going to take my shaping pins here I would, I would use a rubber mallet to be honest, but uh, actually, yeah, we're gonna. You're, you're just gonna drive it through ever so slightly, so get them set. And one pro tip is get these polished up. I haven't polished these ones uh, just yet. I'm throwing them on a polishing belt because the slicker they are, they're gonna be moving in that wood so much easier, and there's not gonna be so much stress to the wood where it can possibly break. So we're gonna go ahead and set these in. Okay, just so where they're just sticking through to where we can get them in the um, 
sandwich them in between the blades. So we're going to go ahead and match them up here. Okay. Okay, there we go. Got a nice match. We can also check the flatness if we have any spacing issues. Um, you want to try to be as flat as possible. A little bit of stuff's not going to really matter. This is riding over some tape, so I do have some spacing issues, but I'm going to be cutting these down. Now, I have the idea of where I'm going to go with, with this, and I can start to see how I want to shape it. The next part is going to be on the grinder here, and this is why it's so important to make these little guys. One quick thing though, safety is first, respirators are not that expensive and they're worth having for a long time. I did everything outside, wasn't too worried about it. Now that I have more of a confined enclosed space, respirators are the way to go. With steel, wood, you don't want that stuff in your lungs. Okay, maybe I should have recorded this before I put this on, but... I'm starting to use, I'm using a used 60 grit belt for bigger knives. I'll use a 36 uh, and just get the material ripped away as fast as possible. So I'm just going to show you just the basics of what we're doing here, but this is a great little tool to have. Okay, so here we go. Is, another safety thing is, That's the general concept right there. We're just shaping up our scales and cleaning this straight to the steel. Stay tuned for the next part where we actually start putting in the grooves. All right, so got the initial clean off there. I got that as close to the steel as I could. I actually switched to a 36. It just, it just moves the material much faster. 60 is nice when it's brand new. It, it removes it and it kind of smooths it too. 60 is still pretty coarse. Um, but there we go. We got as close to the steel as we could. We cut off the the, heel, the bottom here. And now we're not done with the grinder yet. We need to pop these apart. And I'll show you how you shape up the head of the scales. So now that I got them apart, what's really important from this point on is um, knowing your outside from the inside. So you don't see my arrow indicators anymore. So this is where I'm going to start marking the inside most importantly. So this is the outside right facing here. So I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna mark I, R, and then put an arrow indicator for up. And I can do this with a Sharpie because this is gonna be covered. Um, and I know that this is the outside because it's blank and I can leave it blank because in the inside, it's inside right, that direction. Okay, so do that to both yours, uh, inside and outside. So this is the inside left, mark that, and we'll move forward. Okay, now we're going to sandwich them together. We're going to take our blade here and we're going to, you can put it left or right, doesn't matter. Just put the pins back in place. And all we're doing is just seeing the reference of where we want this to stop and then draw it. So what I like to do is I look on the blank side of the blade right here, because that gives me an area or an idea of where that's going to stop. So I'm just going to draw all the way across here And then onto the other side is my indicator that that's where I want it to start. And then I'm just going to do whatever design I want to do for this. I'm just going to do a radius. And then we're going to go grind that to shape and make the top of the scale. You don't say, obviously you don't sandwich the blade back in. You just leave it like this and you go and shape it. Okay. Okay, so... Kind of messed up on my design I was kind of going for, but we'll make her work. We'll make her look nice. So now that I got the top of the scale shaped, there we have it. And we can move on to the ne next step. Having little, you know, unevenness and stuff on the inside is okay. Um, it's the same reason why I'm not worried about the 36 grit, you know, scratch marks in there. 
because there's no point of doing finishing grinds. I'm going to talk about this probably a little bit as we go here in the next uh, final steps. No point in doing finalized finish grinds before you epoxy because you're going to have to scrape all that off anyway. So don't work and don't do the same step three times like I've done in the past and still do sometimes. Um, so it's okay if it look, everything in knife making, in bla blade smithing, knife making, everything has to look ugly before it looks pretty. Okay. All right. So we'll move on to the next step. We Once you get that shaped off, now this is the fun part. Now, some more shaping. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these scales apart. And I'll show you the next, but my favorite step of, of doing this. All right. So I'm going to set you guys over here so you can see me. I almost forgot. You want to have yourself a driving pin of the same diameter. So this is 5 30 seconds. And this is just to knock the pins out of the scales just little love taps don't get a you don't have a big hammer you're more prone to break the scales if you do that especially if you're working with uh, wood or acrylic okay so i've left the pins in that i didn't knock out so we're going to be starting with the left side so you can see the il and this is the arrow indicator i'm going to put the top of the scale um handles facing out this way on my vise. I'm going to lock it in and then you pick your favorite file which in this case is this guy right here. It has multiple or it has two different types of, uh, of, of um, roughness. Super coarse. Okay I mean you can see the teeth and then it has a refine and then I always finish off with 120 grit. So this is what you're going to do. You're just going to be like, all right, well, what kind of geometry do I want to put on this? I know I need to knock some of this forward on the top here because that just looks weird when you don't. So with this locked in, it's not going anywhere. And with those pins, it stabilizes. And you just go to work. You just go to work on it until it's shaped. And once you have everything done on one scale, you pop it off. And then you set it over here to the side. And then you have a reference to look at. And then you can make matching sets. So... Um, I'll show you guys what I, um, I'll work a little bit here and then I'll just take it off video and show you guys at the end what it looks like. Start with my coarser grit. Working it as much as I want to. This will also help you set up for uh, once you have the scales epoxy and you need to round off stuff, you can make those um, pre um, grooves or edges or angles so you can get that, you know, that sandpaper or whatever you're using to round this off and make it a very comfortable um, ergonomic handle. start with the top and then I work on the inside of the belly of the tank or the scale so um, what I'll do for that actually um, is I'll actually flip this around and work away from me because I want depth and I want width and if I work this way I can't do that partially because I'm a lefty um, so lock that in And I do this with all my wood scales and some of my G10 as well. Alright, and you do that until you're satisfied. And then you match them up and I'll show you guys in the next video for the next step what we do. Okay, so next part here. Um, I mean, I, I want to do a separate part of this because you do this for each scale. Once you're done shaping it and you smoothed it out, uh, you want to take 120 grit, 240 grit, whatever. It doesn't have to be pretty. Um, what do I got on my desk right now? It's 220. All right, we'll use 240. We'll use 240. It's just to get it, the super deep grooves out. And then the next part here, so we'll run over this real quick. It doesn't have to, it's just to get the initial 
super aggressive um, grooves out of that. We're nowhere near done shaping, so don't worry. And I typically start with a 120 when I start shaping the scales once they're on. It's aggressive enough to remove even 60 grit grind lines like there's on here right now. This was just to just get the surface kind of just scuffed up in one direction. So once you get that, what you're going to do is you're going to take your pins and you're going to hammer them facing out of the scales. Take your Dremel, lock this guy into the vise, and you're going to start making your epoxy holes. to take your excess here and sacrifice it to your shop drawers uh, in, in your fire. You think I'm joking? I am joking about the shop drawer dwarves, although I have felt because I've literally ground my fingers twice this week. Last week, I mean. And I swear I was tripped. No, I'm joking, but it's a nice little smell. Some of this wood is not toxic and it smells really nice. Anyways, so that's what you do. And then you just go on to the next. And then you are pretty much prepped for, there's one more part to this. And then you're, you're prepped for epoxy. And this will help you uh, have more um, accuracy and uh, pre-shaping. And it just will help you on the long run versus just slapping wood or g10 or whatever and blocks on and then just you know scraping it across a grinder a bunch of times you can get more art and geometry and ergonomics and all that fun stuff and and have it prepped for epoxy versus just slapping it together that's what i got okay so now you should have relatively matching sets here uh, over the years of doing this i can f just by feel with my thumbs and my fingers all over that this is pretty pretty much a 90% if not higher percent of a matching set by just doing those steps. Now, um, the next and final step is pretty easy. Um, you, well, let me just show you what you do here. Um, it's two steps, I've already jumped ahead. Uh, you wanna do your final hand sanding after this step. So um, take some tape. And I just came up with this uh, last week because I was sick of getting epoxy all over my beautiful scales that I just did. And you just want to put them over that. Okay. Take a knife. And Cut yourself a surgical site. This is what I is basically what it looks like is when in the OR they'll cut and they'll just leave the site open that they need, and then epoxy doesn't get all over your beautiful scales on the outside because that's the hardest to clean. And if you're running a grinder or an angle grinder, um, you know with a flap disc or something like that, you could really mess up your geometry. But this way, it saves you some time. Now. As soon as that's taped up uh, and you cut out your holes on both sides, you're pretty much ready to go after you cut your pins. No real special cool trick of cutting pins. And then what I recommend, I've already jumped ahead because uh, I really taped this guy up and I know I wasn't going to be using past this area. If I had some scratches in the area where it's going to be visible uh, to where the scales end, then um, I would do my final hand sanding and tape that area. So what I mean by that is when you're at this part, this is where you want to put your, if you're, if you're doing uh, hand sanding and you're taking your, your grinds vertically, um, 
then you want to do your final hand sanding to whatever grit you're finishing at 220 400 if you're doing stainless steel and you're doing a mirror this is all the time to do all that stuff while leaving this area it doesn't really matter because you want it flat as possible you don't want to take material that's not needed and doing hand sanding you're still doing that so this is where you do that and then you tape it up you want to protect that area as much as possible clean area oil it whatever nice and clean tape it up so it's protected do a thick protection if you need to if you're going to still be doing some grinding because you don't want that belt to skip and then go on to your beautiful mirror finish if you're a stainless steel person i'm not but anyways and that's what you do and then you epoxy her up and then you're good to go and then after that you just you know cut her free cut the pins flat and shape it and you're off and running so hopefully that helps all right and there you have it folks and that's actually the end result. This is now, the epoxy is, is hardened. This is cleaned off with 120 grit, getting into the finishing phases of the handle and the rest of the blade itself. But doing that, now you can use a Dremel if you want. I like a file because I have more control. And, uh, you know, I can't mess up as fast. Doesn't mean you can't mess up. But I think this is a really good way to do scales, uh, especially you know, before the epoxy is on, this will help you have more control in the finish. And uh, the cleanup is a lot easier, especially with that taping method and stuff. So I hope this has helped you guys. Stay tuned for more episodes like this. If you have any suggestions on what you want to see made in the steps of knife making, let me know. We could put that on one of the episodes as well. All right, guys, God bless. Keep your edges sharp. We'll see you next week.